Okay, well, joining uh, Alex, Alexis Rosenberg, trial attorney, federal litigator, is our friend Dina Dahl, attorney and trial consultant extraordinaire. Uh, Dina, welcome to the show. Um, you know, I was writing a list of the murder cases that I handled as a prosecutor, okay? And uh, the motives behind them were ranged from disrespect, money, relationships, revenge, gang-related activity, organized criminal activity. Um, but every now and again, you get a, a, a murder that you can't wrap your arms around. And it's just so odd and strange. And these people are walking around in the real world with all of these fantastical... I, I never had a case with, with anybody with the word doomsday in it. You know what I mean? I never had a case with doomsday cults things of this nature. Break this case down for us and your thoughts about what it represents. It's it's funny because, not funny, but I feel like some of these cases though we do tend to cover here on Law and Crime. I mean, we've seen the Ruby Frank. We saw um, that mass shooting um, with the diner where somebody was the same idea, like was has some psychotic type breakdown. So it may not be in regular practice, but unfortunately we have seen quite a few cases where people are motivated by uh, things that are even harder to explain that seem even more tragic because it's really within somebody's mind. And we hear in that recording here where he talks about how there is going to be dark uh, before there is light. And he's obviously like not connected to reality. Uh, he has this imaginary world that he's living in. They, this, And that's what they have come to believe, right? This doomsday cult. And the tragedy is, that so many the, the children were seen, as you said, to be zombies and had to die as long as his wife. And, you know, it's one thing to have a belief that maybe the rest of us think is insane. Uh, it's quite another to end somebody's life because of it. And that's really what this case is about. These two became um, completely wrapped up into this doomsday cult that they took such a severe action of not only killing the children, but as, as we've talked about before, the way they dismembered them. I mean, it was, it's gruesome. It's a very, very gruesome killing and way of dying that just, it, it, it takes to do that to your own children as she did, or to, he knew these kids also. I don't, it's hard to fathom how disconnected you are to reality that you can justify something like that. Yeah, um, it, it really, I think you hit a couple of points here and, and I have uh, 30 years of a career in handling homicide work and I got some thoughts on that as well. And I know Alexis does, but let's take a quick break. All right, and come back on the other end because I, I want to talk to Alexis and get her opinion about this. Is Oh, okay, um, we're gonna take a break. We're gonna go do a little bit more of the recorded calls and to come back with Alexis and start moving on this theme as well. Um, so I guess the question I'm gonna have for Alexis is, is this always been going on or, or are we just seeing more of it now? We'll be back. Yeah, I'm, uh, you know, Alexis, I mean, we were talking, uh, take any piece of this you want. I mean, but again, I get to the point that these people are speaking logically, coherently. There, there doesn't appear to be mental illness. There's a consciousness of guilt and burner phones being used and utilized. Uh, it's it's kind of frightening. I don't know why. I just find this kind of these kind of people frightening. I, I mean, this level of mental illness and delusion is scary because, like you had mentioned before, Bob, they're walking amongst us. Um, and with you, apparently, it's safe to call if they say not happy, Bob. So, <laughs> but it, it's scary to know this isn't something just out of a movie. This really happened, and these people really have this belief uh, to this. But uh, bringing back what you had said before we went back to trial. I think that this has been around. I mean, going back to the 70s, there were those, you know, satanic cult murder trials um, that we had heard about. And that was before we had, were able to have trials, you know, played live on TV. Yeah, you wonder by the ability to broadcast this on TV and social media, if it makes it worse or it educates people about not getting caught into such you know, a crazy thing. So there, there's no need to like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that this kind of thing goes on. Anyway, I guess we can ponder that. Uh, that's a little bit outside of our legal uh, expertise, but we're going to take a quick break here in the Long Crime Network. We'll be back with more on the other end. Please stay with us.